The Uncle Eric Presents podcast is remastering and presenting the old classic crime, suspense, murder mystery radio broadcasts. Grab yourself a drink and some popcorn, turn the lights down low, snuggle back on the sofa, and let your imagination flow while listening to a thrilling classic crime radio episode now. The Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins. The war changed many things, the face of the earth and the people on it. Before the war, Frank Race worked as an attorney, but he traded his law books for the cloak and dagger of the OSS. And when it was over, his former life was over, too. Adventure had become his business. The Adventures of Frank Race. Join Frank Race for The Adventure of the Silent Heart. It was hot in New York. One of those summer days when the newspaper sent cameramen on the prowl for some citizen sufficiently touched with the sun to try finding an egg in the sidewalk. At the moment, I felt like the egg. But coming out of the furnace blast of the street into the air cooled offices of Trans Columbia Life Plan, it was like passing from this veil of tears into some unexpected brown hell. Oh, 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 ain't this something? Say, are all offices like this, Rest? No wonder secretaries look so fresh at five o'clock. In the reports, you look pretty fresh to secretaries, too, Mark. At all hours. Eh, hey, stop with a crowd. Look, uh, who is this guy that you're going to see? Good Jeremy. There's his name right there in the door. Well, why don't I go in with you? Maybe the guy's got something cool in a glass to go with the cool air. He probably wants to see me alone, Mike. Can I help you? My name's Race. I'd like to see Mr. Jones. Oh, go right in, Mr. Race. You're expected. Uh, Race? I think I'll wait out here after all. Mark, someday they'll pass a law making cab drivers wear blinkers. It'll be rough on you, boy. Rough. <laughs> take your time in there. I will. You take your time out here. <laughs> Hey, look, baby, I know a place where there was a tree tree stand. At I much. hate dancing. Yeah. Now, Mark. Yeah? You try not to freeze to death while I'm gone, huh? Now, Jeremy, thick lens glasses and high forehead. You had the look of the kid who sat next to you in school, the one who turned in his arithmetic paper 20 minutes before you finished yours. At the moment, his eyes were glued in some charts hanging on the wall. You know anything about graphs, Race? Mm-hmm. Oh. Take a look at these. Statistics on angina pectoris, heart disease. This one represents the national average of deaths due to heart ailment. Oh, it's pretty high. It is, Race. It's a big killer. And what's the other chart? That represents one county in our New England district. Same disease? Yes, Race, the same disease. But notice the sharp upswing in deaths during the past year. It's doubled the national average. Yes. Of course, it could be a coincidence. But you don't think so? Obviously not. I wouldn't have sent for you. Race? I think there's a murder ring operating in that county. Any special pattern that the claims follow? Yes. The majority of the claims have been paid to business partners. Uh, Look at this latest one. The deceased, Richard Dodge, was insured for $50,000 by the financing partner, Arthur Becker. Mm -hmm. But Becker's original investment in the business was only $8,000. I'd like to have a copy of that. There's one in this folder, along with a list of other cases that are suspiciously similar. Race... The town of Midville is situated on a lake right near the center of that county. It's uh, rather popular as a vacation resort. You could uh, use a vacation, couldn't you? I'll leave tonight. I'll let you know where I'm staying. Oh, oh, oh brother, what a layout. <laughs> now, this is living right. And did you see those gorgeous chicks down by the lake? <laughs> I am going to like it, Eve. Yeah, be careful of your heart, Mark. This place is becoming noted for angina pectoris. Yeah? You know anybody who can introduce us to the dance? Well, this is one you wouldn't enjoy meeting. Come on, let's climb into some swim trunks. Huh? <laughs> that is exactly what I had in mind. Come in. Mr. Ray? That's right. My name is Arthur Becker. The pet man... The way he carried himself told me that muscles were hidden under those layers of flesh. Muscles that would respond viciously if ever he was cornered. 
His eyes were those of a hunter. Light blue and cold. Very cold. Too cold for this to be a vacation. My business partner, Richard Dodge, passed away a short time ago. I had him insured to protect my investment. I understand you're investigating the claim. Who sells you your information, Becker? This is a small town race. You sent a wire reporting your arrival to the insurance company. The boy who took the wire has rather a poor sense of ethics. He reads things. What do you want, Becker? What do you want, Race? I might help you to find it quickly and save us both a lot of time. You insured Richard Dodge for $50,000, but you only invested 8000 in the garage here. It doesn't have it. I like Dodge. He was a competent mechanic with a good reputation. And according to the medical report when the insurance examination was made, he was a very healthy mechanic with a very good heart. People have been known to take sick quite suddenly. Well, this is a bit too convenient, especially with the money involved. Well, I can see you haven't a very trusting nature, Ace. I thought I might be helpful. After all, none of us know when the old pump might give out, Ace. Could happen to anybody. What did it happen to you? <laughs> In checking around Midville, I found that Richard Dodge, the latest victim of the heart disease racket, had a mother. I went to see her. I can't understand what happened to my boy, Mr. Reed. He was so big and strong. He played football when he was in high school, you know. Did he have any insurance? Any payable to you, I mean? He, he did before he went into the business with Mr. Becker. But then Richard increased his old policy and made it over to Becker... So that the premiums wouldn't cost too much. You mean Richard paid the premiums himself? No, I paid them. I had a little money left over from my husband's pension. I see. I have some pictures of my son in his football uniform and when he was a soldier. Would you like to see them, Mr. Ray? Uh, no, I'd... Yes. Yes, Mrs. Dodge. I'd like to see them. There are some pictures you can't erase from your mind. Richard Dodge had been tall and straight, clean looking. Now there was nothing left but the little old lady who prayed him safely through a war, only to see him die without reason. I walked back to the hotel. Well, hey, it's about time you got back. It's been a dame looking for you. She said there was something you didn't know, and... Uh... You thought might help you. There must be this week's target for good deeds. Everybody wants to help me. She leave a name? Yeah. She said she was Mrs. Dodge. That mean anything? Mrs. Dodge? Well, I just left the old lady less than half an hour ago. This thing was here a half hour ago. And, uh, she ain't all. Not with that complexion. She said she'd go down and wait for you in a car. Park at the end of the driveway. Look and wait. Yeah, I better see her. Yeah, but I've got something for you to do, too. Here's a list of all the possible victims of the ring. Mm-hmm. They all died in this county. The county coroner's right here at Midville. We'll go over this list with him, will you, and, and find out if he performed an autopsy on any of them, and uh, tell him I'd like a copy of his report in each case. Oh, fine. I get all the nice jobs. All you got to do is chase after the dogs, but lucky me. I draw the copy coroner. Now get going, boy. You may be good. <laughs> Blue convertible was at the end of the driveway, all right. The girl behind the wheel steered to the highway. I saw her face in the last glow of the sun. It was lovely. Lovely enough to make me forget for a moment why I was here. Finally, she turned into a small country lane and stopped. Got a figure? Here. Thanks. You didn't know that your dodge was married, did you? That's something I still don't know. We were married secretly more than a year ago. I, uh, don't want to sound like a house detective, but I suppose you have the license. No. Richard kept it. That was an odd choice. Most men keep it blind. Especially when she looks like you, Mrs. Dodge. Call me Red. Red. That's an unusual name. Mm, Not really. It stands for Laurie. When I was a child, it was too much to handle all at once. Why did you bring me out here? Not just to tell me that Richard Dodge had a wife. Our marriage was secret. I didn't know what would come out in your investigation. Yes, Ave. His insurance wasn't made out to you. Richard and I never announced our marriage. 
because I was sorry I ever got into it. It wasn't until later that he told me about Huh. Told you what about his heart? He was sick. He was always afraid that he was going to die. The insurance examiner doesn't agree with him. Neither did the doctors in the United States Army. You could be wrong, couldn't they? You believe me, don't you? She leaned toward me and her eyes were blue in the dusk. Blue and smoky as a Harlem band at midnight. Her hair brushed the side of my face and her arms went around my neck. A man who gets kissed like that needs a strong heart. I could go very fond of you, though. You'd let me. I shouldn't object, should I? After all, you recover quickly. The last man you were found of has been dead almost two weeks. I told you that Richard was a mistake. Whoever killed him made a mistake, too. You have no right to say he was killed, not unless you have some proof. All right. All right, Race. Well out of the car. Get your hands up. Race, it's a holdup. Save that for the Midville Little Theater, baby. You'll never make Broadway. You keep your lip button, wise guy. Tell the dame to start the car and get out of here. Why don't you tell her? You know her name as well as you knew mine. Go ahead, sister. Beat it. Night had fallen. She had to put her lights on to turn the car on the narrow road. My back was to her, and the lights hit the man with the gun square in the face. I don't have any I'm turning this gun into your stomach. Why don't you pull it for you now? Let me pull you. Sure. With this. Uh. Oh, Ray. Ray, I was so frightened. Yeah, you're so sincere. Come on. Drive me back to my hotel. Well, what about Carson? Oh. So his name's Carson. Thanks. Let's leave him there. The duel will bring him around. Brother, what happened to you? You got lipstick on your mouth with the rest of you. What did she do, kiss you and then push you into a concrete nation? Your yeah, rival popped up. A fellow named Carson. How'd you make up with the car? <laughs> fine, fine. But kill the whole quart of elderberry wine. <laughs> he makes it himself. How about the difficulty? Ah, he says it was all just plain hard failures. Said we was worse than our time. Me too, man. <laughs> you know, some I think I'm going to turn in early. <laughs> that wine has made me woozy. <laughs> you probably have me a technical hangover. <laughs> a few minutes ago, everything looked blue, and now <laughs> everything looks yellow. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> yellow. <laughs> what looks yellow, Mark? Uh, everything. Why, everything. Hey, Mark, light up, boy. Yeah, right here in the car. Right. What's the matter with me? Your order, please. Uh, tell room service to shoot up some ice and plenty of black coffee right away. And send the house doctor up. Hurry. I, what is it? I, I feel... Yeah, Mark, Mark you got to be quiet, boy. I'm afraid you're going to have a heart attack. You've got about a 50-50 chance to save your life. <laughs> to the adventures of Frank Race. I stayed at the hotel waiting for the doctor to get finished with Mark. It was touch and go. I knew he was having a rough time of it, but while he was conscious, he never lost that grin. Made me want to go out after Becker and his mom. They operate off cue when you get like that. I knew that. How was he, doctor? He's sleeping now. I think he'll come out of it all right. Coffee you poured into him probably saved his life. I was right about the drug then. Yes. An overdose of digitalis. Administered orally. If he'd gotten a bit more of it, nothing would have helped. How did you spot it? It had yellow vision. I know the color distortion's often the result of a heart depression. Yeah, it could be caused by something else. You made a good guess. No, the nature of the case I'm working on eliminated guesswork in this instance. Uh, I'll have to make out a report, naturally. Uh, do you know who is responsible? Not for sure, but I hope to before long. As soon as I've had a chance to sample some wine. You'd better stick to water if the gentleman you have in mind spikes his wine with digitalis. And speaking of water, I think I'll try some. I hope so. There's also some scotch over it. Yeah, thanks, as we do. Hmm. What's the matter, Doctor? This water. I thought you said he was given the drug in wine. 
You mean there's some in that water? Enough to kill a mule, I'd say. I'd better have his hand light. Yes. I'd better start shopping around for a new suspect. The next 12 hours, Mark slept like a log. I stayed close to him. I thought he'd swallowed it, obviously, but meant for me. Made a few long-distance calls before they went to Fred Jeremy. He came up by plane, loaded with information. Well, I checked for the police race. There's a lot of stuff. I hope you can make it fit. How about Becker? Well, yeah, has a prison record, all right. He also has an alias. Sometimes calls himself Benjamin Delaney. Benjamin Delaney? Well, that's the name of another of the beneficiaries on a policy he paid off a couple months ago. That's right. How about Carson? You able to run down anything on him? He served time with Delaney. He's also out on parole. Good. Now, um, how about Richard Dodge? Any record of his marriage? Yes. Yes, he married a girl named Lorraine Gregory. A civil ceremony performed in the next county. Lorraine Gregory? The county coroner's name's Gregory. That's right, Race. She's the coroner's daughter. But what were Becker and Carson convicted for? Armed robbery. Hmm. Picked a less spectacular game, but one that's all even more lethal. Race, uh, in view of what happened to your friend, I think we could get the police to make an arrest. No, no, not yet, Ben. Couldn't make a stick. Why not? Because we can't prove access to the drug. It's hard to obtain. We've had every source checked and all prescriptions searched. There's no way they could have gotten their hands on the quantities used. None that we could prove. Hi, fellas. Hey, Mark, come on now. Get back in bed. Ah, oh, not a chance. Don't you know more people die in bed than any place? I'm sorry about what happened to you, Donovan. The company will try to make it up to you. Oh, thanks. But I am interested in how you could have made it up to me if I drank just a little more of this. <laughs> I guess you're getting better, all right. <laughs> I have been slept Mickey's before, you know. But this one was meant to be permanent. I would like to get my hands on the gent who's prepared. I hope you'll get that chance. I'm going out. Uh-uh. But there's another dame in this. Yes and no. I'm in the mood for a little elderberry wine. I'm going to visit Coroner Gregory and his daughter. <laughs> Yourself. Your father home? Come down to my hand, baby. Ask your hand, baby. I'll be carrying handcuffs in mine. Get out there, Rain. A man named Race. He wants to see father. Well, yeah, bring him in, girl. And him, Mr. Mother? Yeah, this is Mr. Ray. Mm-mm. I'd like to talk to the coroner officially and alone. Well, I can always wash my hair. But you'll find that mother and dad are hard. You may leave us, Margaret. I'll stay right here. You had too much wine to be left by yourself. You mean he might say things I shouldn't hear? What I mean is my business. Gregory, you uh, almost had another heart failure case in your hands. A friend of mine. That's so. If he had died, your report might have been interesting. I wonder what it would have said. Since he ain't dead, there's no way of telling. I think you'd have passed it off as a natural death. Just as you have in many other cases. Heart trouble is a common disease. Yes, but not when it's caused by digitalis. Why didn't you do an autopsy on Richard Dodge? I know how to run my job. It might not be a job for much longer. I'm going to ask the state's attorney to appoint a grand jury to investigate these deaths. Okay. You ain't getting me out of this job. Margaret will see to that, won't you? Shut up. Why should I? These city fellas are so smart. We don't like outsiders around here, mister. You can't like your own people too well, either. They're dying off too easily. On that cue, I left. I'd uncovered one small point. Wherever Gregory's local political strength came from, it came through his wife. I checked around and found that he'd held some minor political officer or other for years. But the key was Margaret Gregory. It wasn't long before I could fit her into the jigsaw. I went back to Fred Jeremy and Mark. What? What's the answer, Race? Who tried to do away with me? Well, we're getting close. The coroner? Only part of a setup. I know now why Becker and Carson and probably quite a few others are wandering around loose. They were paroled. Yes, but they shouldn't have been. Not if the parole board had been given the full facts. But who could hide the facts? Only one person. The secretary who prepared the reports. And when they were released, that secretary happened to be the coroner of the night, Margaret Quigley. Well, that ties it up, doesn't it, Race? All but the digitalis. But I think that I know where that comes from. Well, it must have come from some place. They got gallons of it. There's a third man in that holdup at Becker and Carson. A man named Otto Rodman. Yes, but Rodman was never paroled. It was his third offense, and he got a stiff sentence. 
He has another ten years to serve on a fifteen-year rap. Yes, but he's behaved himself very well for the past five years. He's a trustee at the prison. Yeah, so what's that got to do with a digi... Uh, did you tell us, Mark? <laughs> That's what I said. I think Rodman supplies it. Because for the past 14 months, as a trustee, him, have been assigned to the prison hospital. Yeah, that's rough, Race. Things get around quick on a prison grapevine. If we went in to investigate, he'd know it before we got to him. Well, not the way we're going to do it, Fred. I'm going to set up with the state's attorney. Mark and I are going into that state prison as a pair of convicted hijackers. <laughs> To go to the infirmary. Yeah. Wait, though. Wait, though. Uh, uh, get in there. Uh, here are two guys for sick call, Rodman. Probably faking. I'll see him on the way back after the doctor gets in. Okay, Mr. Seward. What are you guys in for? Well, I had a cop say we hijacked a truck. Yeah, but of course you didn't. Of course not. Yeah. Ain't it a shame the way we innocent guys keep getting thrown in here for nothing? It was a frame-up. Yeah. What are you in for? I borrowed some money and forgot to give it back. You guys really sick of just stolen? Yeah, my uh, heart's been giving me a little trouble. I guess being in this place brings on heart attacks. Nah, you get used to it. We ain't had more than four heart cases in a year. I've been on this job. How do you get an assignment like this? Keeping my nose clean. Just better than the other spots? Yeah, got better. Do special privileges. Private room visitors three days a week. Does it work hard? Nah. Guys gotta be pretty sick before they let him stay in here. Mostly at the clerk's job, keeping records, ordering supplies. Mm. Those books are uh, right there beside you. Hmm. That yeah, looks pretty simple. Aspirin, bandages, coating, and digitalis. Quite a lot of digitalis. I order every month, yet you've only had four heart cases in more than a year. Well, the, the stuff spoils the stamp here. You gotta make sure it's fresh. Besides, you better put that book down before the doc gets here. Hey, get over and sit on that bench. Well, man, you've been slipping that digital us out of here a hundred grains a month. To Becker and Carson. You're crazy. You're not supposed to be. Watch him, Race. Uh, what are you, a couple of stupid? Rodman, you're an accessory to more than 20 murders, and you'll die for it unless you get smart. Die? Right. Put on that scalpel, Rodman. Uh, put it in here. Look out, Race. Stay back, Rodman. This thing is sharper than a razor. Can you take it? I'll kill you, Ed. Rub it. Rub it. You look, Rodman. There's an electric chair in this set up someplace. Who's going to sit in it? You, or Becker, and Carson, and the Gregory's? Uh, all right. All right, I'll talk. Save it. I'd like the warden and a couple other people to hear it. Open up! God! <laughs> hey, you know something, Ray? I'll bet we're saving a shorter sentence anybody ever saved me. Well, Race, can you think of any reason why we should pay your fee after treating you to such a fine vacation? A vacation? Are you kidding? I almost become a corpus delicious. <laughs> oh, oh. Mark, Latin and you do not make a team. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I certainly am. <laughs> what a ring. The coroner and his wife and daughter and a pair of cutthroats. Hey, you know something, Race? That rain dame wasn't bad looking. I, I don't think she was so bad. Maybe your family just broke their into it. Huh? She working on your heart for the second time? What do you mean the second time? What do you think poured that stuff into your drinking water? You mean she did it? Why, that two-time and no good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that would have uh, gone on if you hadn't stopped it, Race. You'd save the company a lot of money. I um, wanted to talk to you about that, Fred. You never paid Becker for the death of Richard Dodge, did you? No, no, and uh, we won't have to now. Well, those premiums were paid by Dodge's mother, Fred. Sweet old lady. She's the real victim of this. Oh, I see what you're driving at, Race. I think I can arrange to have the claim paid to her. Ah, thanks, Brad. You're a decent guy. I hope.
hope you enjoyed this latest Uncle Eric Presents episode. Stay tuned for the next exciting episode. Please check back often and make sure to subscribe to my podcast so you won't miss the new exciting episodes. In the meantime, scroll up or down to find other exciting episodes to listen to. Don't forget to visit UncleEric.com to see and listen to all the program categories and episodes. There are also hundreds of the old classic crime and detective television show episodes you can watch as well. They're a hoot to watch. That's UncleEric.com. If you like this episode, please consider buying Uncle Eric a cup of coffee at the support link below. Thanks a million. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye for now.